Last April, sinabi ni Paolo Duterte na wala na siyang pera and were desperate to raise funds. He called on Finance Secretary Sonny Dominguez to raise whatever money he can para labanan itong problema ng COVID-19 virus and to shore up our hemorrhaging economy in the midst of one of the longest-running lockdowns in the world. In his emotional speech in April, sinabi ni Paolo Duterte, I'm calling on the Secretary of Finance to generate funds. Magnakaw ka, manghirab ka, wala akong pakialam, produce mo yung pera. Now, over the following weeks, that's exactly what the Philippine government has been doing. Kaya sinasabi ng mga critics, baka the way out of the crisis for the Duterte administration is utang, utang, utang. And what will be the implication of that for the Philippine economy for generations to come? Most recently po, pinahiram tayo ng multiple multilateral agencies, especially the Asian Development Bank led by Japan and the Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank led by China. Pinahiram din tayo ng $500 million ng World Bank which is based in the United States. Now, the government has been raising up to $2.25 billion, no? Malaking pera yan, for the so-called CARES program. Ito yung COVID-19 Active Response and Expenditure Support Program. Now, dapat medyo may pera actually yung ating gobyerno. By mid-May pa lang ay nakapag-raise ng $5 billion ng ating gobyerno. And in the coming weeks and months, we're hoping to raise more than $8 billion or lampas sa 400 billion pesos. Now, this is to help yung mga communities na may pangailangan. This is also to help yung Department of Health dun sa kanilang public health policy expenditures. Pero yung isa pang gustong gagawin ng administration is a build, build, build strategy. A lot of infrastructure projects to generate funds, to generate growth. So may utang, 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 pero may build, build, build din. Nonetheless, many are worried na baka sumobrang itong pangutang ng ating gobyerno. Last year, Vice President Lenny Robredo was already asking the government to explain a significant spike in our debt, which is already breaching 7 trillion pesos. In particular, the Vice President raised concern over the Chinese infrastructure projects in the Philippines, which have been accused of having very high interest rates at hindi masyadong transparent. Now, clearly, the debt issue has increasingly become political. May mga propaganda efforts also to besmirch different administration. Now, earlier this year, may mga kumakalat ng fake news na sinisisi ang supposedly Aquino administration for bringing a lot of debt to the country. Ayon sa mga propaganda na yan, Duterte administration and Arroyo administration actually had very minimal contribution to our debt. Karamihan ng ating utang ay galing sa Aquino administration. But the more accurate measurement, yung net addition, ano yung nadagdag na utang ng bawat administration by the end of their term after paying back the debt from the past, and at the same time, ano yung mga dagdag na loan na nakuha nila? If you look at the net addition, actually the Aquino administration had very modest addition or relatively modest addition to our national debt. Based on calculation by economists, by the end of Aquino's term, yung ating utang ay nag-increase to almost 6 trillion pesos, 5.948 trillion pesos. Pero yung nadagdag lang ng Aquino administration was around 1.36 trillion pesos. Within the first three years of President Duterte, in fact, by January 2019, President Duterte made a similar amount of net increase in our debt. That was larger than the entire additional debt that the Aquino administration added in six years in office. And that debt is expected to even increase further in the coming months and years as the Duterte administration tries to fight back against an economic recession. Nonetheless, many experts will tell you that wag tayo masyado magalala. After all, it's one thing to have more and more debt, pero kung lumalaki din yung economy mo and your ability to pay back is strong, then dapat hindi tayo magalala masyado. Not to mention, yung debt na in-incur natin, we can invest in productive capacities. So over time, pwede natin mabaway kung anong nautang natin plus new productivity and new growth. And let's not forget, a lot of this debt is actually also domestic debt, not necessary to foreign lenders. Debt crisis usually happens when you have a lot of debt to foreign investors and capitalists. And this was particularly the case during the Marcos dictatorship, kung saan by early 1980s actually bumaksak yung economy natin because we couldn't pay a lot of debt that we owe to our foreign lenders. Kaya whether Utang, 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 or build, build, build ang response ng Duterte administration to the ongoing crisis in the country. The key there is sustainability. 
And sustainability means that even though nakapag-utang ka ng marami, you can create even more growth para mabayaran mo yung utang and at the same time you create additional growth and jobs for the country. And that way, we can get out of the crisis and once again become a rising tiger in Asia. Ako po si Richard Hidarian. Stand with us. Stand for truth.